Hi, this is problem 18 from the EMC 10A and problem 14 from the 12A. A difficult uh, math puzzle logic problem, so let's see what we have. Each vertex of a cube is to be labeled with an integer 1 through 8, with each integer being used once, in such a way that the sum of the four numbers on the vertices of the face is the same for each face. Arrangements that can be obtained from each other through rotations of the cube are considered to be the same. How many different arrangements are possible? So this is the kind of math puzzle logic problem that you probably don't get much of in, in high school. And uh, I want to try to describe some of the thinking that goes into attacking some of these problems, so, so bear with me. So it looks like we're trying to solve the case of a cube. We'll try to visualize that. Where we're going to put numbers on each of the vertices of the cube such that the, the sum of the numbers for each face is the same. So we have six faces, and it looks like each of these numbers is counted three times, one for each of the faces that adjoins that vertex. And that allows us to calculate what that face value is, because we can sum the face value, six times the face value, and we find that each of the vertex numbers gets counted three times. So that's three times one plus two plus all the vertex values. And we can solve for this pretty easily now. So that's 6f is equal to 3 times 36. And if we work that out, that the face value is 18. OK, so that's really helpful now. And the next step is to try to understand, well, what does it mean to rotate these things? And if we're considering that these rotations are all equivalent, then what that really means is that we can basically choose one of these numbers to be an anchor point for the rotation. And in choosing that anchor point, we could choose any of the numbers from 1 to 8. But it's generally preferable to choose an anchor point which is the most restrictive right from the get-go. So it seems like choosing the smallest number or the largest number would probably be the best anchor point. And I think you could choose either, but uh, my preference is to go with the smaller number as the anchor point. And uh, let's see what that looks like. So we're going to choose our draw a cube again. And we're going to choose this anchor point to be the number 1. And so uh, however we arrange the numbers after choosing this, we can consider that to be a unique arrangement, provided we can't just spin it around the long axis through the number 1. And we'll see how that works in a bit. So having chosen the number 1 as our anchor point, we find that the, the values for the, the nearest neighbors will have to be on the large side in order to uh, allow us to basically choose the next set of values to have these face values all add up to 18. If we choose these numbers to be too small, we find that we can't actually satisfy the face values to be 18. So they have to be fairly large. So uh, let me just take a guess and see if I can try to find one of these solutions right off the bat to try to get a little bit of insight as to how this works. So having chosen one, let me choose these next three to be the largest possible. So let me choose this to be six, seven, and eight, and see if that works. Now, I notice that once I choose these three values, the rest of the values are all fixed. So one, six, and eight basically forces this to be a three. This forces a two, forces a four, which then forces a five in the back. So having chosen these three values, all the other values are fixed, and that's really helpful. Now, having chosen these three values, how many ways can I rearrange these three values to create a unique solution? And it turns out there's really only one other way. So the only way to choose three cyclical values is to have them either be increasing in value clockwise or increasing value counterclockwise. So for each of these distinct arrangements that I come up with, I can only create one permutation to uh, create an equivalent arrangement. And so what that means is there's a multiplicity factor here equal to 2. So for whatever arrangement I come up with, I always find that I can generate another arrangement that is unique for the purposes of this problem. And so that, that's a very important clue. What that basically tells me now is the answer has to be an even number. So it can be 6 or it can be 12 or 24, but it can't be 3 or it can't be 1. And that's really helpful. So it looks like I found one value here. So how to find some more values. That, that's really tricky. So let me try to understand this a little better. 
I notice that when I choose these three numbers, I have a lot of constraints that I have to work with. Uh, so one of the constraints is, well, the two numbers here or here basically have to add up to uh, greater than or equal to nine, because if they're not large enough, then that forces the back number to be larger than eight, and we don't have a number larger than eight. So that's one constraint. And I also notice that if I were to choose the numbers to be, say, five and six, uh, that would force this back number to be also six. And of course, we don't have two sixes. So essentially, five and six would force the uh, back number to be six, and that's not allowed. Also, five and seven would force the back number to be five, and that's not allowed. And similarly, three and seven would force the back number to be seven. And again, that's not allowed. So that's a lot of restrictions here to choose these three numbers. And so what I find is it looks like it's going to be very difficult to actually find additional solutions. And if you play around with this a little bit, uh, you can find that uh, you can generate an additional solution just kind of by trial and error, just kind of feel your way through this. I chose numbers to be kind of arithmetic, eight, seven, six. So it might be natural to guess eight, six, and four. And that basically forces a seven here, a five here, a three here, and a two. And that's uh, one additional solution. But again, there's a multiplicity factor of two X. So now I'm up to four solutions. And it's getting a lot more difficult now to find solutions. So at this point, you may conclude that it's very unlikely that I'm going to be able to find enough additional solutions to get up to 12 total solutions. And that very likely, there's only going to be maybe one additional solution to be found. So at this point, you can pretty much conclude that it's unlikely to create uh, six distinct solutions times the multiplicity factor of two. So the answer is probably C. And uh, if you work this problem a little further, you'll find that uh, there is one additional solution. And that is with uh, the one anchor point and four, seven, eight, and that uh, dictates five, six, two, and three in the back. And that's the only remaining solution. So that's one, two, three, times two, which is six. And what you can conclude is that with all these restrictions, it's going to be just about impossible to generate three more of these distinct solutions to get up to the value of D. So C is in fact the very likely correct answer, and it is in fact the correct answer. So hope that helped, and uh, we'll see you at the next problem. Take care. Bye-bye.